Hello people out in YouTube land. The latest version of Driven by Moss comes with some really helpful new extension. In, in an outburst of creativity, I named it the generic flexi because it's so flexible. So what you can do with that extension is you can assign any kind of MIDI controller device you have by using that extension and choose from a gazillion of functions to execute when you push a button or move a knob on your controller. If you add that extension. You see you have a MIDI input and an output, so you need a device with at least one MIDI input and output. For example, I will use here the complete control, which you know if you have seen a previous video, can only control the volume and panorama and these things, but not edit devices. So in that example, I will use that generic extension to assign the device parameters uh, for editing. So let's add both MIDI input and outputs. And and now you see the extension coming up and that's a really big thing here. So what the idea is, you have 200 slots and to each slot you can assign a function. So for example, you can have a button press here, a knob movement here and so on. And uh, it's also pretty easy to assign. So what you do is you twiddle a knob or push a button on your controller and you see this will be automatically uh, received here. And then the next thing to do is is simply push the add button and you will have filled the first slot. So we have now a MIDI continuous control message assigned with the number 14 coming on MIDI channel one. And uh, we talk about this later. And now you can select a function to that. You see there are a lot of functions. You cannot even see all of them. So let's try something simple. Let's say we want to assign the volume of the first track to that one. And what you can also do if your device uh, has a kind of display where you can show the parameter as well you can send back the value so also if I change the volume slider here in Bitwig it will be sent back to your device if you have that one here enabled and so you can see the correct value or for example if I change the banks with the device parameters you will see the correct value numbers on your device if you don't have a display or maybe LEDs or something like this then you can simply turn this off to save some bandwidth with your MIDI connection. So what is it? Knob mode. Uh, you can choose from four options. So absolute is if you have a slider, for example, if which only sends the numbers 0 to 127, then it's simply absolute. Relative can be used if you have a knob which sends relative information, which means if you move it to the left, it sends, uh, for example, one. And if you move it faster even, then it sends two or three. And on the right, it sends something different. And these are the three common options you find on MIDI controllers. And you need to find out what are the possibilities of your controller so you can also have a relative change. So there's the first ring assigned and you go on like this. So for example, I push a button and I want to have that button here. It's now 112. I can also assign it so it fills the next slot. It always fills the next slot. And the thing is, uh, if the function is off, it's also still considered as an empty slot. So if I press add again, it will simply replace that one. You can also use that to clear a slot. So for example, here, if I set the volume again to off then it simply will disappear and you can re-edit by simply twiddling the knob again adding it and it will fill the first empty slot so let's go back to our example what we wanted to do is have from the device set the first parameter so we have that one and here for example we want to change to the let's say we go to the next device so we can have the device control and you can again go on like this add all eight parameters at device left right and also add bank movements and the all these functions looking at the functions you have all the transport possibilities you have the global stuff like undo redo you can toggle all transport states fiddle around with the layout all track commands monitor solo and so on and so on so also the browser control is in there and um, maybe let's move that a little bit here so also browser stuff is here scene starts launchment you can navigate in the clips basically everything you need is there and you can have a very very functional controller with that one so let's also check out if that works so if we go here and we will see we assign that first knob and you see okay that's working fine going back to the settings there is also another option here which says x and 
import. And this is really nice because if you have a really complex setup here, maybe with up to 200 slots, which is quite some work to do and set up, then you don't want to lose it and you maybe also want to transfer it to a different computer. So what you can do is select a name here and then export it to that file. On Windows and Macintosh, there is also this button to help you select a file. So for example, I can say, okay, uh, I want to store that here on a, on a desktop. You can give it any name you want and then you get here the full path name. On Linux, sadly, we don't have this support for this dialog. So you have to type that here manually or copy it from another file system browser. So you don't have to type it in, into that. And then see, we can click on export. And as you see, we have now then here a new created file and you see, will see all the data and then I can also re-import it. So if I select that file again, clear that up. So let's remove that one. Let's remove that one. So it's now empty again. And if we say now import it back, so we have the correct settings. A quite simple to use, but very powerful tool to assign any controller you have. And I hope you enjoyed it and make some funky music.